Here's a jewel blueberry. You know, it's one of the low chill varieties from down in the southern United States. You know, it's planted in uh, Mountain View, Hawaii. It was put in about two years ago. Uh, as you can see here, it's got a good dose of fruit on top. It does well. We got uh, over here prima donna. Uh, we got abundance. Blueberries uh, they do pretty well here in this tropical environment. I'm pretty surprised at that. Over here, we got dragon fruit. These are uh, fairly new. I grew them from seeds going back about four years ago. They're the uh, Selena Sirius variety. Here we got two flower buds, uh, four years from a seed, and we're getting the first flowering coming on this. Um, it's, it's working out pretty good. Commonly, you see uh, the red or pink dragon fruits in the marketplace. Um, this is the yellow dragon fruit, Selena Sirius. It is so good compared to the Hylo Sirius. Um, these are my absolute favorite. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. We're pretty high up the mountain over here. This is uh, 1,680 feet at this point. Plants seem to be thriving up here. Um, and that's a pretty neat thing. These are a perennial sweet pepper that folks grow around here called the Hawaiian cocktail pepper. Uh, it's, it's a really, really delicious sweet pepper. I believe it's a chinense, capsicum chinense, like uh, habanero. Um, it has a smell like that, although uh, the fruit is sweet. Uh, it's a bonnet-shaped thing. There's really nothing to pick on here at the moment, I don't think. I don't know. Let's see. Ah, oh, oh, there's one right there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we do have one. There's one right there. See, it's kind of a kind of a bonnet-shaped thing. It looks like it might be hot, but this thing is so sweet and so delicious. They call it Hawaiian cocktail pepper here. Here we've got some of the uh, Hawaiian koa trees. These are the trees that we use to make uh, ukuleles, uh, guitars, use them for uh, the uh, canoes, traditional Hawaiian outrigger canoes made from the koa tree. Uh, they're doing pretty well here. They're from seeds. They're three years old. Here's an amazing piece. This is a uh, about a three or four year old kukui nut tree. Um, right now I think the tree is probably spanning maybe 20 feet across. It must be at least 18 feet in the air from a seed I picked up over in Na'alehu when I was there with my son about three or four years ago. That's a pretty amazing plant. It grows that quick. This is red plumaria. It's a, a fairly young plant and these kind of grow pretty slow here for us this high up the mountain. But it's coming along. Put that in a few years ago from a one gallon. Um, that's what you use to make the uh, lays out of uh, fragrant flower. And behind it there, we've got two jaboticaba. Uh, jaboticaba is a fruit similar to a grape. Uh, it's a looks like a conquered grape. Purple skin, uh, white flesh, a couple of seeds in the middle. Uh, it really, is very grape-like, but it, it's from Brazil, I believe. And down below it, there we have rows and rows of white pineapples. Uh, underneath a Satsuma mandarin. And there are little pineapples there on the top of some of them. You can see one right there. And here's the uh, first row of coffee on the edge of the yard here going down. This was pruned in uh, February, so it's, it's May now. So it's starting to re sprout. I took them down to about four foot. And this is one of the oldest cacao plants, or the plant that chocolate comes from in our yard. Uh, it's just starting the new spring foliage, that red growth on top. Um, grows a little too slow up here, I think, at this elevation to be a, a commercial crop for us, but a little further down the mountain, a lot of guys are very excited about growing the Hawaiian chocolate. Uh, and over there behind it, we've got a, a Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee plant that I collected. Um, that's a, the famous variety uh, from the mountains up in Jamaica. It, uh, it grows really well here, but man, oh man, talk about something that uh, takes a long time to make coffee. That one, and that's 
much much slower than Kona Tipica. A little bit of spider webbage over there in the sunlight through a macadamia nut. We've got a row here of macadamia trees. I believe I've got about 11 of them. Now. A row of white pineapples right here. Uh, they were planted I believe about six months back. Um, and they're right next to them there are the macadamia trees. Uh, eventually the macadamias will get so large that they're going to take up the sun back here but for the meantime I'm able to uh, raise these white pineapples. Right over there is a patch of sweet potatoes. And beyond it there's some small rambutans. We got uh, abiyu tree over there and some pulisan and banana cuttings. Here's the Hawaiian mountain apple. That's a local favorite. It was brought here in the canoes uh, with the first settlers. And right behind it there we've got a uh, Persian lime. That does really well here and the limes are exceptionally large. They really they really shouldn't be that big. I mean, darn things look like oranges. And Williams bananas. That's uh, another crop that does exceptionally well around here is the banana. Right next to it, we've got a rambutan tree that I put in from seed. There's an atomoya. And behind it, a pulsan and a banana cutting and then way down there at the end uh, we've got an ice cream bean in Inga. Uh, those things get huge. There's some middle-aged rows of coffee. I have uh, larger older coffee over here on this side. But we started to go from the Kona Tipica into the Dwarf Katera variety over here. Much shorter plant. Between the coffee, uh, we've been putting in white pineapples. I've also been sticking in a few koa tree right here. Again, the Hawaiian hardwood tree. It's kind of a, what do you want to call it? Uh, it's a bit random. Any place that I put in a coffee, came back a few months later and found that the coffee hadn't taken, I'll replace it ordinarily with a fruit tree. And so right here is the star fruit uh, where a coffee plant failed. Right back there behind it is a Rolinia fruit where a coffee plant failed. But then I'll go through and put one to two pineapple plants in between every one of the coffee plants. It'll take the coffee plants about four years to fill in the space you know, so that they're a solid hedge. It only takes about two years to get the pineapples to come around. And so we can do this and as I move up the uh, the hill over here and keep planting coffee further and further up to the back of the property we just keep sticking pineapples in between the coffee plants. It's working out nicely. Uh, the white pineapple is extraordinarily delicious. Uh, it's also a crop that will ship off the island without any special paperwork because it's not a fruit fly host. Oh, that's a real nice thing, finding crops that these days that you don't have to irradiate. Because the government wants to irradiate anything uh, and everything to get rid of fruit flies. That seems to be the solution, is put it in a nuclear reactor. Yeah, the coffee's starting to bloom. This is Kona Typica. Over here is still uh, a little bit of fruit left on it at this point, and some overripe fruit up there that didn't get picked. Down at the bottom of the hill where it's a little wetter behind the house, we've got uh, uh, Williams bananas, and then I've got apple bananas, and then there's some ice cream banana on the end there. The large tree over there is an avocado. And then the rows of Kona Tipica coffee going down here. Again, pineapples between. Always pineapples between the coffee. also using sweet potatoes in here as a ground cover under coffee. That works pretty well too. I like that idea. And this is a egg fruit that's been placed here where I've got a coffee plant failed. And I just take the opportunity as the basic monoculture out here which is coffee 
uh, as I end up with holes in it just by nature, um, to take the opportunity to plant something different to use a shade around the coffee. And so that's how the egg fruit gets here. Or right over here, uh, we have a sour sap, the guanabana. It's one of the anonas. Uh, that's, that's been there for a while. That was in one of the early coffee rows. It's actually beginning to fruit, starting to get some uh, flower buds on it right there. So I guess we'll start to see some sour sops off this plant pretty soon. It's a rather unusual looking tree. The uh, structure, the branching up the center, it, it grows like a ladder. The limbs almost oppose each other evenly going up. Pretty interesting geometry.